in the, the schizophrenic manner that is common to the Missouri Senate to pass all the restructuring and then elect me as president. <laughs> so no matter where I go in the Senate, I, I happily tell people I know everybody in the Senate got something they didn't like. <laughs> so we're all on equal footing in that regard. Not long after the election, as uh, I think John Beaker and uh, Al Culver and Barbilo hit the ground really probably the week after the election or the Monday after the election trying to begin to get a handle on everything that we faced, which was just enormous. You know, you have an $80 million institution, a lot of plans that had already been made. Uh, I had not been part of the planning up to that point on the new structure. So just to get a handle on what was actually going on, it was already way down the track. And um, in the midst of that, I was convinced that really to, to get a hold of this, we got to think, think theologically. And in the midst of that maelstrom, Al Culver came to me, now director of church relations, and he, he had this, this rough three circles pinned on a sheet of paper, notebook paper, with three little things on it, martyria, diaconia, Koinonia. And those of you who know Greek, uh, those are what we have up here, witness, mercy, and we translate koinonia as life together. He said, you know, I've really been thinking about how the New Testament orders a life, the life of the church, and I think this would be a good paradigm. And we immediately began looking at it, each of us, uh, very intensely, trying to get a handle on what, what it means to be church. You know, every president will come along and has come along and had, uh, you know, the one mission, one message, one people, and Al Berry tell the good news about Jesus, and uh, there have been all kind of campaigns of blaze and fan in the flame and forward and remembrance and Ebenezer and uh, all kinds of other ones. It's funny to read uh, John Bankin's memoir where he repeatedly says from like the 1930s on, well, we had a fundraiser to get the Synod out of debt. <laughs> it didn't raise as much money as we hoped. We got rid of the debt, but by the time all the money came in that we raised, we were in debt again. <laughs> Just the way it goes. But uh, unlike other times, we had been given the task of really organizing under these sweeping changes the Synod Convention gave us, the task of putting the work that the Synod does in its program areas under a new kind of structure. And so we, we worked on this piece um, rather quickly, but uh, it's really turned out to be a blessing. You see there are three different circles here. Up at the top is witness, and it's uh, the color Pentecost, and I know a blaze is certainly not popular across the whole church. There were areas where a blaze was very popular, and I guess in my presidency going forward in this era, we want to say yes to whatever was good in the past, forget about what was not so positive, and go forward. So this is an invitation in. It's Pentecost red. The church needs to bear witness. That's who we are as the church. It's a, a church without a witness is really quite dead just like faith without works is dead. We'll talk about these in a minute. And you see it all, everything emanates from the cross of Christ at the center. And everything overlaps. The second circle, this mercy circle, uh, the word in the New Testament that we translated mercy here is diakonia, although there are a couple of other words for mercy, but diakonia, which is the prevailing word. Jesus says, I came not to be served, but to serve, diakonai and to give my life as a ransom for many. And in the middle of this, you have the old world relief, human care, uh, heart and cross. And you notice that it's on the left. A lot of uh, left-hand kingdom stuff, cooperation externals, and those kind of things happen over here, interface with uh, the government on certain issues, etc. happens here on the left hand. But you notice there's this large inter, uh, interconnected area. So, uh, also we have over here, life together, and you have a kind of a sacramental vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. This uh, Christianity is something we're in together. There's a, 
joke I heard, a man is stuck on a deserted island and for years and he's picked up and put on the deck of the boat and the captain says to him, well, what are those three huts down there? I said, that, that first one, that's my house. What's that second one? It's my church. What's that third hut? That's my old church I left there a long time ago. <laughs> We are disconnected from one another in our day and age. We are radical individuals, and that individualism, confessional Lutherans are susceptible to that individualism as much as anybody else. We have a life together in the church, and you see it flows from the sacramental life too, and Paul uses the word koinonia also for the sacrament. And yet all things together, wherever the witness of Christ is born, and the the, the Lutheran church plants Lutheran churches. The Lutheran missions lead to Lutheran churches. So where the witness is born, two or more are gathered as the church. And wherever two or more are gathered in the name of Jesus, they can't help but care for one another and also look to care for others in need. That's who Jesus is. So this isn't just a, this isn't just a slogan about some kind of... A, Fund development slogan. We didn't even think of, I haven't even thought about raising money so far, really, in some kind of campaign or anything. This is meant to be a catechetical way to teach the church again who she is. That's what we are. Based on the New Testament.